So, ladies and gentlemen, how are you doing? I am here with uh, Mr. Marcus Fallon, the, the golden one, and we are going to talk today about a variety of different things. I actually wanted to interview him for a while. We are in Stockholm at the moment. We are in the uh, wonderful land of Sweden. This is my first time being here, and I enjoy it immensely. And I was uh, being guided around by this gentleman. He's been taking me to the runes. You've been taking me to magic stones. I uh, may have Norman blood because, you know, Irish, Norman, Vikings, and so I'm wondering, am I tapping into the ancient... Homeland and all this stuff, but um, today I wanted to talk to Marcus about many things. His career is one of them, and of course the uh, the wondrous, uh, as you can see, the Thor's hammer in his neck, <laughs> the wondrous uh, uh, story of Norse mythology and various things that that might pre- represent. So, Marcus, how are you feeling? Thank you very much for all the hospitality. And um, as I said, I'd love to get into various things like the heroic Thor archetype, moving on to Woden and all this. But how are you generally? Yeah, How's, I'm, uh, I'm fantastic. Great to be here with my favorite YouTuber. I'm not saying this to praise you. I've said it before. I've said it to others. My favorite YouTuber or content creator or thinker or whatever label you want. So. I better be your favorite YouTuber <laughs> as well. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, it's, it's great to be here. Great to be on the channel also. So Good stuff. Well... Something that we've been speaking about on and off for a while, I guess I'll get into this one straight away, is um, like you were asking me about the the kind of archetype transition that you would see. It, this actually kind of comes from young is where I get mm. it, where you're a young man and, oh yeah, so this would be a great way to start it. I'm here, we're training, and you have various people around you now at this point, young Swedes, who are very inspired by you, which I think is phenomenal. Like, I meet, like, a 19-year-old guy, and he's um, huge, he's massive. Mm. I'm looking at him, like, there's, like, Golden One Part 2, you know? (laughs) He's a huge guy. And I'm talking to him, and he's saying, like, I found Marcus four or five years ago, and he's inspired me to, you know, transform myself. And he's put on like 50 kilograms or 40 Mm. kilograms or something like that. So he's huge. He's like gone through this massive transformation. Now, we look at the modern world. You see all these influences pumping into people's heads via TikTok and things like this. And his life could have gone many different directions, Mm. you know. And so you clearly represent an ideal that inspires him to change. Mm. And when you were younger, this was like, you know, you embodied this. You were like, I'm going to be the physical specimen, the physical beast. Yeah. And now it seems like you're getting older. And so you're <clears throat> transitioning maybe more into a fatherhood role and becoming more Wodanic, expanding your knowledge and all mm. that, maybe even having to let go of that. So I was going to ask you an awful lot about that. There's psychological challenges with that. There's important things with this. So, Yeah, definitely. So I tormented myself in the month of August this year, tormented myself by reading... Uh, the Decline of the West, both oh, volumes, dear. and uh, I got off on the wrong start with Spengler because he, he wanted to make a distinction between classical, like Hellenic culture and Western culture. And for me, this is heresy because, of course, I'm a great fan of ancient Greece and Rome. So we got off on a wrong start, Spengler and I. But he has some good points, especially when it comes to the like the cycle of um, civilization or indeed a man. And then we can go into the um, like Norse archetypes as well. So we have Thor, and this would be the archetype I tried to embody in my younger years and you know full focus on being just a force of nature there are many different archetypes here as well but the the simplest expression would be like a full force of nature and you know, getting as jacked as possible and shredded as possible and uh, now when i'm on a venerable ancient i'm uh, 35 thousand years as i usually <laughs> say i know that it you know it's physically possible but um if I'm being completely honest, it's quite it's um it's not really doable for me to get back to that shape I was in when I was like 25. Um, so I'm looking at pictures of me then, and I think to myself, I'm I'm coping now. I'm using Oswald Spengler to cope with the fact that I don't look as good anymore. But I have to accept that you move through different archetypes. I've been in that stage, and had I not developed to a more Odinic, so Votan, like the more knowledgeable, the father figure, the more um, yeah, enlightened one, instead of being an archetype of purely strength, maybe I wouldn't have felt it is either. So it's sort of like you have to go with the cycles of time. Well, the world is cyclical. That's the like basis of pagan spirituality that everything goes in cycles. So, so now I'm coping with that fact. So uh, this is all a big cope on my part. No, I'm joking. So, but anyway, that is how you can approach it at least. So you go from the younger archetype to 
Uh, so Thor is the son of Odin, by the way, could be good to point out as well. Interesting. Yeah. yeah, so there are two different functions there. Now, of course, I'm still, you know, a loyal man of Thor and everything like that, but the, the perception of yourself, it does change a bit and it has to change because you have to develop yourself. Now, earlier in the year when we talked about this off camera, I, you know, we talked about it, you you gave an example of Conor McGregor as well, seeing that he has, you know, his, his golden youth being the most famous fighter of all time, best paid fighter or uh, MMA fighter at least uh, and then he has to go through a different stage and it can be hard to let go of your youth um, now for a man especially for me this is quite easy I'm just joking when I talk about coping and everything like that but I can suppose for many guys it can be hard and it could also be very hard for many women especially if they don't embrace the path of motherhood that they see their youth slipping away from them and of course it's a tough thing for a woman to get older because your natural attraction it gets lowered so if you don't trade that for the path the archetype the Demeter archetype of the mother yeah it can be can be quite hard and I think we see a lot of this heartbreaking stories of women who they got tricked by modernity saying that children isn't it and then they sort of they don't make the transition from the uh, the youthful Aphrodite to the loving mother Demeter so uh, so I think it's easier for a man to sort of deal with this because for a man also it's like your looks yeah I wish I was I wish I were as shredded and jacked as I was before but it doesn't keep me up at night either you know I have many other things in my life and I wouldn't really trade it for anything so now I have my companies of course my family two extremely beautiful daughters beautiful wife so I'm happy with what I have so uh, yeah well it's good it's um, you brought up uh, Conor McGregor and obviously I don't want to throw shade at the man I'll get caught in the street by him one day if I'm not careful <laughs> but he's a very good example because I was saying like I look at the the young Swedes even now and they ide- idolize you and this causes this triggers in their head inspiration and they say I want to transform I want to become something I'm not I want to become something more powerful and better and they expand and they grow and they they, they try to fit the ideal that you have fulfilled you know and a lot of you is, mm, the Nords up here like you are all like massive guys so it's it's something that you seek towards um, and Connor's very much like that I, I remember the energy in Ireland mm. around 2014-15 I was very young and I just started uh, kickboxing and I was in one of his gyms actually mm. just as he was blowing up I didn't even know who he was and I remember just the aura mm. the energy everybody was like there's a hero there's, mm. a, there's someone to seek towards I see it very similar with the guys the way they're looking at you and it's that sort of inspiration towards the ideal and obviously Connor absorbs all that energy and mm. Connor's a brave warrior and he's a fighter and he's an unbelievable risk taker and he's incredibly competent and skilled but um, I do wonder again not throwing shade at the man but I do wonder is after he got like super successful he had all those fights he made all that money against Mayweather was it an issue where he was he was struggling then to transition out mm. of that and say like what's the next step because a lot of fighters go through this mm. a lot of soldiers go through this where they're like you know they go out and they fight in Iraq or something like this and they experience the thrill of, of war and then they come home Home and uh, they actually start to develop something like PTSD where they're like this this reality isn't real mm. like I, the best years of my life the most exciting part of my life is over now mm. and I'm 35 and you're like man <laughs> what am I going to do for the next 35 years you know <laughs> and then it's the sort of same thing with, with Connor and many UFC fighters I'm sure like many athletes go through this mm. they're they're in their prime of their youth in their 20s they have all their success and then boom they wake up and they're 33 36 38 mm. and it's like I am I am now I'm I've, I'm past it I'm, I'm done this mm. type of thing and um, again, psychologically, you're speaking about this, that gear shift mm. out of the, the, the identity of the hero, the youth, mm. the, the, the strong man, uh, Thor, if you so will, into something that's more fulfilled. And I, I think you made a really good point is that it's not about dropping Thor and mm. being like, oh, I'll, I'll become weak now. It's <laughs> not like that. It's about like sort of, it's almost like fleshing it out, expanding it, mm. expanding the dynamic and becoming becoming big because you're obviously haven't gotten weak like you're doing cheers, you're cheers. doing your uh, <laughs> Russian squat routine the other day he's moved like a ton of weight you know like a literal ton of weight you know <laughs> thousands of kilograms um, so this is this is something that I, I see as a, a, actually a very valuable psychological thing and an awful lot of people um, it's just something that I see with maybe we could say the millennials because a lot of the millennials are now starting to get older mm. like we're in the very low end of the millennials and there's like the big fitness community that showed up in the internet, mm. the fighters, all this. And that generation now is starting to have to confront these things yeah. and develop the psychological maturity to move on. Mm. So, um, so I have actually something since you mentioned the Normans. I had last summer, I went in on the um, Norwich's two volumes of the Normanth 
Normans in the South. Oh, Super yeah. interesting, can definitely recommend it. So I went all in there and uh, gained some new perspectives, some new inspiration from from the uh, the attitude of the Normans. So this is like the um, can go very far back in history to the Koryas as well, the Menerbund of the Proto-Indo-Europeans, the Aryans as well. But anyway, the something I think about a lot and something I say to other fathers, because you know, in the in the current era, we say that once you become a father and husband, it's over. You need to only be like yeah. Um, Homer sin some kind of dad bod guy but if you look at the Normans their their path to power their will to power it continues so they have a bunch of children but it doesn't stop they continue so they bring their family along with them on their path to you know conquer a um, territory in the boot of Italy or whatever it might really? be really so Dutch. they'd have like the, the yeah, wife yeah. and kids in the in the longboat yeah uh, not in the longboat they actually <laughs> rode it down believe it or not so they rode it down from Normandy what? to Italy yeah wow. so they the first they got there as mercenaries and then came more and more and then they started to take over uh, the space in uh, southern Italy and uh, Sicily but the main like psychological technique here is that for me as I view it I have my beautiful family I'm taking them with me upwards and onwards. So this is this is not the end of the journey. And this is super important because I see so many guys that get depressed. Which guys, they do get depressed if they don't have any goal to continuously work towards. So they see, and this is also why fatherhood might be a bit... Um, not super attractive sometimes because they say aha now I can't do anything fun anymore now I have to let go of all of my dreams now I become a slob uh, dad bod who, who is just like a, a homebody and just stays with his wife but you can, can actually continue on your path same as before so I can train also technically I could get in the same shape I can still get stronger you know I pulled a um, PR in the deadlift earlier this year actually Good so <laughs> even if as my advanced age and being a father of two and and with the companies and everything so you can still progress and especially when it comes to companies because that goes into the more odinic archetype or the the norman baron uh, archetype as well that you have your your um, dutch your kingdom that you try to expand in my case of course the clothing and the supplements and uh, everything else i do so i still try to expand my journey it's ongoing so i don't i never viewed it as becoming a father that's the end of anything it's just a you know a side quest that you take with you upwards and onwards and of course the main quest is to achieve regime change here in sweden so many decades to go and this is also something that if you look at someone like trump um he's pushing 80 super much energy because he has a goal he has a mission he's on he doesn't let go he doesn't relax and this is something that i do believe when we're talking about like this psychomagical techniques that as long as you have this goal that you want to achieve desperately, you have an unlimited amount of energy. I usually talk about the inexhaustible energy of the Normans. I like it. He writes about it, Norwich. So I thought, yeah, that's a good uh, way to formulate it. So like, you, you always have that energy because you want to conquer something. Very, very Indo-European stuff. It's uh, the will to power, as Nietzsche would say. Yeah, definitely, definitely. As long as you have it, then you have energy coming to you all the time but if you give up on your goals then you will become a um, a slouch basically well that actually that tenacity for constant expansion is is very valuable because um, there's two things I, I wanted to bring up that you mentioned one of them is the the kind of wall of depression because of the myths about getting it's like mm. you know hit, having a midlife crisis people talk used to talk about this all the time mm. and you're, you're actually very right is that there's a lot of people I think intimidated by fatherhood by mm. taking those next steps by maturing and it's precisely for those reasons that they lose like their youth their freedom mm. various things like this and you're just sort of saying like that this i would like to invalidate some of those narratives because mm. you for example have probably gone through more pressure than pretty much anyone i can think of and like serious pressure mm. and you built a family during that period mm. during that time you know and it was fine it works out you know mm. and it's just that and this this is a very positive because it's like that mental strength that you'd have and you're always saying stuff like oh you think like, having, the, having the kid is just going to be a disaster and it's going to be expensive and it's going to be like the kid's going to be like asking you how to solve Einstein's uh, <laughs> relativity theory every day and, so, and you're like it's it's actually not that hard you know you've, mm. d- you've done it for probably close to uh, 100 million years mm. you know like they're, they're, it's a very normal thing mm. your instincts switch on things figure things out they're not even that expensive you know you give them you know make a supplement company give them whey protein they'll be fine <laughs> this type of thing and um, and it's that type of, type of idea that like this can be done mm. these are realities of life the idea that like nature is going to be some type of massive hindrance on you is, is kind of like a little bit absurd if you think about mm. it like all of these things are are, are are normal and they're built to your advantage and and if you just have that idea 
idea of keep pushing forward, you're fine. And mm. I, I guess this is the thing you're pointing out is that uh, an awful lot of people's problems is that they are living are in maybe their 20s, early 30s. And the only ideal they have mm. is that sort of like youth eternal summer, which is a valuable yeah. one. Mm. But they don't, it's almost like they lack the imagination to mm. go to the next one and be like, all right, well, how do I transition from the youth energy, the Thor, just pure Thor, uh, into like the, the kind of like kingly adventure? Yeah. Because even if you look at, uh, you speak about the Normans, you speak about the, the kings, you look at something like uh, Braveheart. This is the bad guy, the villain in Braveheart, Longshanks. Mm. Very, very powerful man in history. And he's an old guy in Braveheart, and he's still plotting how he can expand the empire yeah. and, and yeah, move territory forward. And it's like, that can continue right away, like like you said with Trump, that's just going to keep going. Mm. Like, it's, your mind doesn't break. Mm. And there's all these myths about you get older, your testosterone drops, and it's like, that. Like a lot of that stuff is not doesn't prove out in reality. There's, mm. There are people who are, you could say, maybe weak, low thumos, and all of that stuff does crush them. Mm. But, you know, the, there's plenty of exceptions. In fact, uh, I'm not even sure if that's a rule, if you want to put it this way, mm. so... I think that attitude is great. Your positivity in that front is very valuable. And I've mm. like heard it over the years. And um, it's something I just don't see that that much. Yeah, I mean, the when I understood, and this it dawned on me, I don't know how many years ago, but it was related to my physical transformation. So same as um, Yukio Mishima talks about in Sun and Still, that as he transformed himself physically, his mind also changed. And you, you know, start to see the world in a different light. And especially when it comes to this shouldn't be possible because, of course, this is what all athletes are saying as well, that they have heard detractors say, oh, you can't do this, and then they overcome it. So it's a bit of a cliche, but it's still true. And you notice that quite early on when you start doing things yourself. So I remember even with the business parts. Now, don't get me wrong, I've had a great amount of obstacles in my path over all of these years. So it hasn't been easy, that part, but it was still doable. Uh, and, you know, it's a mental game mostly against yourself. This is also what I learned when I got the most shre- shredded I was back in the day. It's a low body fat percentage, maybe 9 or 10, which is low for a natural. Uh, so when I noticed it, you know, it's a battle in the mind first and foremost. And this is also when I talk about magic, that is what I mean. What's going on in your subjective universe, what you decide upon in your mind. And if you decide your mind upon something, and this, by the way, this is not some revolutionary insight from me. This is, you've heard it a thousand times before from different kinds of, you know, gurus and people, athletes and holy men over the years that, you know, what you believe and you can actually manifest it into reality. And this is also when I realized, and this is something why I like your work so much, because you highlight this, especially when we're talking about the political situation. You have a bunch of black pillars, they create the reality. They create, it's hopeless, we're gonna, it's over, everything like that. Yeah, it becomes reality, but we can just as well say it doesn't have to be this way. As long as there's a will, there's a way, literally, quite literally, all throughout history, same story. And the will, of course, it's a product of the imagination, so we're in the realm of the gods or or the metaphysical realm or the realm of magic or whichever term you want to label it as. So this is when I realized this. At first you're quite naive and you look at all of these black pillars saying, oh, it's lost for Sweden, etc. But then you're like, "Mm, hold up, hold up a bit. Might not be actually true. So this is one of these great revelations that it's not a big revelation at first, but then when it's, you know, when you continue to think about it and you continue to think about it's actually a battle of wills and the the opposing side they are using a lot of these tactics on you saying that it's inevitable the future is this way and that the, what we had it doesn't come back and then you stop and say, think to yourself wait a minute this is enemy propaganda enemy magic they're using against you to formulate your way of like your uh, thought patterns in your brain saying like okay this is how it is so it's the same thing as i would say to an opponent, just lie down and give up because it's hopeless. Of course I would say that. And of course they say that that it is hopeless and that Sweden now is a multicultural society for eternity. It's like, mm, nah, it's not. <laughs> it's, um, so. Do you know what that reminds me of is uh, Khabib. Mm. Uh, you'd see videos of Khabib and he's like, you know, elbows coming down on people and he's holding them there and he starts speaking to them. Connor mm. would do this as well, but like Khabib specifically would be like, I deserve to win. Mm. You have to give up because I deserve to win. Mm. My reality and my will has mm. to come true and you have to submit your will to me my dream 
defeats your one, and then he's he's putting pain into him as mm. well to enforce it. Yeah. And it's really intense when you think about it because it's almost like uh, you know it's like the two sperms fighting for the <laughs> egg. And if yeah. Khabib wins, he get he he manifests into a human. The other guy just dies and like yeah. he, you know gets irrelevant. Mm. And that's precisely it. Like you, you don't even remember who he's beating up in a way. Mm. You just remember what he's doing and his intention and, and what he's forcing into the world. And it's that type of um, intensity. It's like it's like a fight. Mm. And at one point, you know, b- before obviously death. At every point up until that point, you're basically, it is just a decision. It's just a mm. mental thing in yeah. some sense. You're just yeah, sort of saying like, how, to what extent, when are you going to give up? Mm. And when do you, when do you start to just sort of say, oh, I guess like, yeah, they, that rea- their dream, that reality, the bad reality. Yeah, that's going to happen. Mm. And I, and I have no imagination for it. And you brought up imagination because I think this is a very, very fascinating thing to go into mentally. Mm. Um the effect that the imagination has on the will and on reality because we're always in trouble mm. we're always in a bad situation and um, when we look at things and you look at reality you see all this bad stuff but imagination changes everything yeah. like you can just think differently about the situation and all of a sudden you can get inspired I, even another gentleman uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger now he, obviously we, we might be a bit upset with him with some of he his he has reasons. fallen to heresy he's become <laughs> as definitely a heretic <laughs> but even looking at um, his career he's actually a great example of many of these successful archetypes first mm. of all he was Thor mm. and he very effectively transitioned. He was one of the best men I've seen mm. at tra- transitioning out of like the, the older archetypes into newer ones. He goes from like Thor into uh, uh, an actor, into mm. a wise movie star actor and then into a politician. Like that's an incredible mm. transition yeah. out of three major careers. Very, very effective from a man who couldn't even speak the native language properly. Mm. And um, you listen to the way he talks, especially when he was young, he would always say this stuff like, the imagination creates the will. I would stand in front of the mirrors and look and imagine myself, you mm. know, with my, I might imagine my physique ideally and that would motivate me. Mm. That would get me up. And this is the thing then, he, he goes into the movie business and people say to him, it's like, you can't do that. You must be blackpilled. It's not possible. <laughs> you have a stupid accent, yeah. you know? You're too big. People just say to him, you're too big, mm. which is probably true, but like they'd say, you're too big. You look weird on camera. Mm. And he just had the imagination imagination to say well there's a way i can make this work i could mm. be a barbarian with a weird accent but massive mm. and then i can iron out the accent as time goes forward mm. and then he can create that sort of archetype and so his imagination gave him opened up possibilities mm. and then his wi- and then that inspired his will and he forced the issue yeah and it worked and he changed reality mm. and you're you're absolutely correct like um it's very easy to complain about the problems of the world, but the actual hard stuff, the things that heroes do and warriors do, mm. is they look at the situation and they think to themselves, how, how do you how do you press against this? Yeah. How do you change the situation? How do you imagine? All the people we idolize, like we'll say the Normans, like think of the incredible amount of imagination they would have to have mm. to say like they're starting in Sweden with a rickety fisherman's son <laughs> And then they have to look and say, well, we'll take a large amount of territory of France, and mm. then from there we'll conquer England, mm. and then we'll take over the British Isles and take Ireland, we'll sail down to Sicily, we'll form this enormous British uh, Norman Empire, mm. which would go on to become the Christian kings of Europe, and then end up taking over America. Mm. Like, the, the the tiny beginning, yeah. just a little bit of imagination and will, leads to them running the, you know, the being the kings during the period of the British Empire, and like, ruling the world. It's mm. insane when you think about it. It is, it is. So, so, um, so I, I was actually in the same situation as Arnold with English. So my English was quite quite uh, horrible in the beginning. So if I look at old videos like from back 2014, and I got you know people said noticed it as well. You know, especially other Swedes like what, what are you doing? Your English is horrible. <laughs> so I I mean they were right, they were right, but I didn't listen to them, and I continued to you know go at it just with this. Uh, you know, I mean it was doable. Still people liked me, uh, not for my English pronunciation, but because of my charisma, I just let it fly. So it's also like something can be true in a mo- moment, but it will be not true the next moment because of your imagination and your will. So it's all a battle of will. And this is also why I, you know, when I look at the, the situation, so of course I've been in the metapolitical game for 10 years, uh, the fitness game for a bit longer, but I switched gears around 2015 or something like that. But um, something back in 2015 
you, perhaps you saw these memes as well, Sweden, yes, Captain Sweden, Sweden is so cocked and bad and Swedish men are so bad. At first, naive Swede that I am, I was like, oh, we're, we're bad. And then I was like, mm, nah, actually not, because I started to travel a bit more as well. And I saw, you know, this um, other places, Sweden is still in a very good position and it doesn't really make sense for us to be black billed now. And then I also started to, so fast forward a few years when I encountered your content, started to read Nietzsche a bit and, you know, ressentiment and uh, this inferiority complex and I was like okay all of these other guys talking ill about Sweden do they have a different like uh, do they have a different motivation to do it and then I thought yeah maybe they actually do maybe they find some sort of enjoyment in trying to denigrate the once glorious Vikings so uh, the Sweden is the womb of nations so the sacred holy land for the Germanic people so Normans included Uh, but anyway when I sort of understood also that something like stoicism which was popular or perhaps still is popular in in our circles i started looking at it and like okay marcus aurelius i'm not saying anything bad about him but he he guarded the wrong border and he didn't do much good he left the empire to a quite bad son and uh, you know this is not the energy we want and need we want augustus or trajan or hadrian or something like that some a great conqueror that envisions something not just someone who guards a, a dreary border for his life and you know gets cocked as well <laughs> let's not forget he <laughs> yeah, got cocked. Yeah. Uh, and then he writes his memoirs and saying things like you know um, sex is only two pieces of meat rubbing against each other i don't know the exact quote but it's something like that and for me sex is something magical and holy and sacred it's, it's up here it's not down there um but anyway to what i juxtapose against this realistic, logical, rational stoicism is the the hopeless dreamer, the sensitive poet, the, the romantic. Sturm und Drang, he stands at the cliff and, uh, you know, fantasizes about a uh, beautiful, whatever it might be. This is the type of energy we need so we can actually envision something great and glorious instead of just looking at the situation. Oh, the, the demographic, they look so bad or whatever. We need to look at them. We can actually do this. So, uh, yeah, a bit of casual motivational speak talking points but it's still true it's cliche but it's still true I, I look yeah people people sometimes give out about you know maybe in the philosophy game people will give out about making things too self-helpy and stuff it like is but I, I really just don't like that at all mm. I think it's a terrible way of looking at things you look at most people who want to uh, escape something like self-help mm. it's it's very it's it's very very bad to think that these abstract ideas aren't allowed to touch your personal reality mm. like again I'm coming from Carl Jung and he just drills you all the time that Anything intellectual needs to manifest itself through your being, through mm. your reality. Yeah. And if you try to escape into intellectualism and keep it separate from what you are, you're doing something psychologically that's dangerous. It's wrong. It mm. leads to a lot of bad things to happen. So he specifically says um, it actually leads to uh, a problem with the feminine because the, the world is a feminine thing. You engage mm. with it, you touch it, you 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 know you go into it. <laughs> yeah. And if you become a man who becomes over-intellectual, starts to create all these riddles and mazes in his head... Mm. No more like he escapes reality and he becomes particularly cynical because the intellect is actually naturally cynical mm. and he gets kind of trapped in there and then everything becomes black pills and mm. he overthinks everything and this type of stuff and so um, everything you're bringing up here is like it's, it's actually so crucial to understand the psychology of sort of saying to yourself all right you know we're going to do stoicism we're going to be realistic we're going to be you know smart and savvy and cynical and mm. realize and it's like you're like we need paradigm breaking situations yeah. we need people who think differently we need to push forward in this type of way and and that was actually fundamentally like if you look over at America even now mm. with Musk and everything like you can't put that down to stoicism no. the fucking dude is talking about going to Mars <laughs> yeah. and it's like you know he's just it's just all these random things that you wouldn't have expected five years ago mm. that are just happening because chaos and imagination and paradigm shifting and mental me, like mental bravery I guess you could say is the thing that actually like tilts these types of things it's the mm. thing that breaks the kind of static yeah. uh, reality that we're in and, and again like you know compliments to you and um, you go in under an, an awful lot of pressure but these are traits that you would often display there would be there would be these narratives about uh, yeah be be negative be black build things can't work blah 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 and you were always saying like yeah again with the kids thing you know like you, it's not as hard as you think mm. it's, it's possible for you to keep 
keep fighting even when you're under pressure. It's possible for you to think differently about your situation. There's there's no reason why you should just let people convince you that er- everything is lost mm. and everything is bad. You actually get to decide that, yeah. especially as like the the male courting of your people. Like it's like you you literally decide the reality of what's going to happen. Mm. And and you can just keep pushing, you know, you can keep pushing the thing until it's full conflict and then it's mm. and and see where it goes. So I, I think that's very, very important and something I don't see enough actually. Mm. And because of that it doesn't translate into high quality um uh, individuals because mm. you need this this mental this way of thinking it's very important all the uh, the self help stuff it does become cliche yes but that's because it's like uh, you go and you want to become a boxer they're like get really good at jabbing and you mm. hear that a thousand times and it becomes cliche but that mm. doesn't mean that not being good at throwing a jab mm. is not the most important thing to do you know <laughs> it, it footwork matters and the elites practice footwork yeah. even though it's the basics because that's the thing that drives victory mm. and i think there's there's an awful lot to that that's important people <laughs> yeah definitely i uh, portugal um was a few years ago with my irish team shout out team came van in oh, good. Uh, in Ireland so we went for a week in Portugal and it was a black belt and he he um, in uh, oh, well decent enough English but he was like base base basics 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 all the time so we drilled basics and it's all good it's it's what wins ultimately so in basically everything you do it can be a fighter it can be in business in marketing marketing like make a good product that's your best uh, marketing there is um and uh, when it comes to all of these things so uh, yeah and I will say also, looking back at 2019 or something, just the state of mind for many people, myself included, I will be completely honest, I was a bit more blackpilled then. I still kept, you know, the flame up and everything like that, but the the spirit now, it's something completely different in the West, you know, generally speaking, and in Sweden in particular, because it's sort of like the zeitgeist has uh, changed completely. And that's because of, well, one, the the reality, the red-pilling reality, everyone sort of sees, you know, um, gangs shooting in, in malls and stuff like that. So it, it's hard to, to deny, but also the, the fear of... Um, social stigma to speak up against it so it was a completely different thing in 2010 and then a bit lighter in 2014 and then in 2018 a bit lighter and now it's you know open mainstream you can talk about it you know the issue with mass immigration from the third world uh saying that 2010 you were deemed as a, a heretic but now it's like yeah no, i agree so a big big difference in in the uh, and if you would have said this to a, a normal swedish citizen back in 2010 it would have been quite um Yeah, big difference at least. That's my yeah. point. Big difference. Like um, even again to go back to analogies of fighting and the mentality, because it's weird that we're we're scaling this over to society and talking about it's almost like a, a psychological battle because it's psychological warfare mm, fundamentally. It is, it is definitely. Um, I would look at like fighters again, Connor. I'm sorry, but <laughs> when Nate Diaz was fighting Connor, mm. uh, Connor McGregor, it's it, it's this exact thing where Connor's like so forceful, so powerful, so skilled, and he comes out at Nate in those first two rounds in the first fight, and he's just like destroying him, you know, and he's smacking him and everything. But Nate endures. Mm. Nate doesn't get black built. Nate no. is just like, yeah, keep hitting me. Ow, that really hurt. Ow, okay, my <laughs> my neck's not right after that. But he endures, mm. and then Connor wanes. Then all the energy is spent. And then Nate Connor's like, I'm still here. And mm. Connor's like, fuck, this is not going to be good. <laughs> and so Nate yeah. like turns the story on him. And then you can actually see Connor begin to just fade mm. really quickly. And the fear gets him because mm. he didn't break him. All of a sudden he realizes, I'm fucked now. This is tough. Mm. And it's it's fascinating watching that because they're two absolute heroes fighting. But it really goes to illustrate these types of things. Is that like it, like people like yourself, you're much earlier than, than me, for example. But people... Um, Stood stood up and took the full force of the psychological reality, and they were like, "Well, we need to reimagine the situation." And then all the heavy negative energy comes and mm. and hits really hard, and that breaks that breaks people all the time. It's really mm. tough. It's really tough to fight against that, especially when it's like social, because mm. like the psychological pressure is enormous, and you 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 get all that stuff, but you, you endure. And th- and eventually things begin to change, and then it's like the force of that change becomes enormous because mm. you've survived it. You feel way, way more confident. There's an awful lot of credibility to, you get for doing this, and the people that you're going up against get demoralized. You're seeing that an awful lot in America now, where mm. an awful lot of the people who were the opposition before are kind of like capitulating big time, mm. and and they're like losing an awful lot of credit. And the youth, this is another thing we're seeing is like all the young people mm. are now starting to flock, um, shall we say, a more realistic position on yeah. things. <laughs> 
mm-hmm. and and it's it's amazing to see those like those 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 fighting analogies because they're, they're it's going to be necessary to understand them in the future mm. and people again they, they they can't seem to think psychologically about this stuff they want it to be abstract and maybe philosophical but an awful lot of this was like it's an emotional thing you mm. know like pressure political pressure is an emotional thing mm. they put pressure on you and it's fear yeah. and it's and they want you to black pill and give up mm. that's they mentally break you that's the, that's the goal and there's just simply that question of like will you endure or not yeah. like how do you how do you think yourself out of the fear and then um, keep on pushing until eventually they give up mm. that type of thing you know? yeah so I uh, a fond memory I have back in 2017 uh, fought MMA uh, and then I had some uh, some Profound words of wisdom. Shout out Dennis. He's in Ukraine now fighting on the Ukrainian side, actually. Wow. So uh, he is Russian, but he, he doesn't like Putin, the Putin oh, wow. regime. Uh, wow. So a completely different topic. But anyway, shout out to him. So he said, you know, I know you're going to be nervous up there, but keep in mind two things. God up and continue to breathe. So that served me well in, in that fight. Um, one submission first round by the way you just need to have that said <laughs> <laughs> um, so but anyway that sort of stuck with me even because 2017 was also when um, I started to gain more pressure from the media and you know hit piss and stuff like that so I kept that in mind going forward as well that okay I, I will keep breathing which is you know keep pushing content and not slowing down anything because I knew also that this momentum that they're giving me they, they give me an opportunity to now present my view because people of course search for oh the golden one on youtube and then i had some videos where they got quite popular so i could present my view like yeah i'm a perfectly reasonable guy and then also keep keep the god up keep breathing and that you know keeping the god up is to yes you will of course get hit on the god and you might get rocked some shots might get into you but if you still you know try to keep your composure because some guys they get rocked a good few times and then they start to you know, some guys they lose it, some guys they break, some guys they want to quit. But if you just keep the guard up and keep pushing forward, again, super cliche, but it's one of these fundamental truths, truths to just, you know, and then you can start, you know, unloading back, or you can do it at the same time, which is what I view it as, you know, a constant slugfest with the life itself. So they throw a hit piece at me. I use that, you know, same as in boxing, like you, you slip, boom, and then you gather force from the other side coming back, boom. So you use the their momentum against them, uh, which I've done. So shout out to uh, mainstream media here in Sweden and in Netherlands and where else. So they've given me exposure and then I've used it to sort of, uh, yeah, present my view of things. So shout out to all journalists. I think some of them actually like me as well because some hit pieces they were quite nice to be honest so well like, <laughs> like, this know. is another side of this as well because I think in terms of discrediting um, the mainstream it's just egregious because I could I could somewhat understand people who are like actually negative like people who are going out and saying inflammatory things mm. just to rile people up like I kind of get you, you like you go up there and you you say crazy stuff just to get people angry at you mm. and all this and you know censorship's obviously like you should have a sense of humour about these things mm. but people do that and you're going to aggravate people and it's going to end up in in, in pressure but the thing with you that's particularly egregious is that like you were never negative you were never you were never even insulted I don't even think you swear I can't even remember you swearing that much I did back in the day okay. but it was mostly like I'm so mm, juicy okay, and, right. and stuff like that so it was mainly like charisma well, uh, narcissism and so stuff there was like that. Like, I, I don't even remember any insults I don't remember you attacking specific people that much no I, I made a joke oh, uh, Maybe so, <laughs> so uh, back in it was also 2017 crazy year so it was the um, uh, another YouTuber called ContraPoints and oh, uh, yes, I yes. made a reference to um, to Skyrim because when you fight the elves they say you're but a dog and I'm your master okay, so I right. said it in a video but uh, the the YouTuber uh, understood also the reference so it was fun but yeah. maybe someone took that wrong way but otherwise no I don't believe in insulting anyone uh, online it's really if I want to insult someone uh, I'm you know that's in in the flesh and i'm not going to do it anyway if i want to fight someone i will just go up and say it uh, and besides i have already you know thrown down the gauntlet to the regime so that's the fight i want to take i'm not interested in any drama i have the biggest the biggest monster in front of me and, and that's my focus so yeah well like just to continue my point is um generally speaking like you're promoting a highly positive message message you're talking about growth becoming mm. stronger becoming better and this type of stuff like it, it's very leaning towards self 
self-improvement. It's just amazing to see something like that get attacked. Mm. That's what's really bizarre. Yeah. Um, because it's like, there, there comes a point where you're like, as I said, maybe something that's just very negative, very extreme. You could kind of put pressure on that. I understand that to an extent. I don't agree with it, but I understand it. But someone who's literally like, all right, here's, here's how you fulfill the male archetype. Mm. And you stand for your territory. That's a part of it. And mm. it's like, well, I don't like you doing that. It's like, fine. But to, to just go so crazy on a positive image mm. is insane. Like, that's the type of thing where I think a lot of people saw that and they're like, what is this guy even doing? That's, yeah. that's wrong. <laughs> like, what is he doing that's wrong? Yeah. You know, like, what's, how is this, it, how is this illegal? Like, mm. how is this bad? Mm. And it's, it, that, that type of thing, again, it's like the pressure thing. It's like, you just keep breathing, hands up mm. and you take some pretty heavy licks mm. And then eventually, and people are watching that from the sidelines. There's all these young guys, like myself. I was young when it was happening. The the guy, the 19 year old I was speaking to as well. Like they're just watching that and they're thinking, yeah, I think I know who I'm, I'm, I'm rooting for here, you know? <laughs> and that's that really, that's really eye opening. And there's mm. no way you can philosophize that. There's no mm. way you can kind of technically talk about that. It's, it's literally something that people have to endure. Mm. Like you have to just see someone go through those licks and be like, fuck, okay, I can see the bad guy and the good guy here, you know? Mm. And, and that, that's a big deal. So like it's, um, it was something. I noticed that I didn't like it a lot and I saw a few people that were like that there was mm. others maybe more extreme but a few people who really tried to um, just you know do it well be polite do the right thing and, and they got attacked for that mm. and it's just it's egregious it's really nasty you know mm. people um, people really trying to get the best out of themselves present their message as sophisticated as possible participate in the civilized act of political discourse mm. You know, and present and cultural discourse and present ideals and values and, and debate and discuss things. And it's like, attack them the hardest. You're like, yeah. nah, no, you, you are the bad people then. This is <laughs> yeah, it. this is so fun because when I went to school, high school, they always talked about my, uh, my teacher was like, oh, freedom of speech is this profound value of our society and I was like oh nice based it is I'm gonna go with it and then a few years later no it no, <laughs> doesn't yeah. really go you, you're gonna get uh, get hit for it so but yeah naive. it was good that I was a naive dreamer at least so I'm happy that I did I didn't know all of the and there's also the um like the, the archetype myth of a hero's journey that you don't really know all of the struggles and you know in front of you and uh, it can be a good thing it can be a good thing to not know what you will encounter uh, and this is also you know this overthinking aspect that it can be good to not think too much before you do something because then you will you know people will laugh at whatever it might be people will think that I'm an extremist or whatever but uh, yeah that can be something good as well paralysis by analysis is the term I, I believe that you, you get so you know you don't do anything because you only fa- imagine the bad outcomes instead of imagining the good outcomes it's very true it's um, it's like the Tyson thing where he's like everybody got a plan to get punched in the face mm. like that that exact idea in that um, you, we can sit here I, I even think about 2019 because I started my channel in 2019 mm. and I had so many plans and then just 2020 hits you like a, mm. a freight train, train yeah. and you just don't know. You can never plan for that. You mm. can never know what that means and what's going on there. So it's, 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 it's very, very true. But I guess this is um, this actually might be a good window then to get into, uh, maybe we could talk a, bit, a little bit about Norse mythology now because mm. we're, we've been spending our time here talking about like will mm. and pushing and imagination and all this. So I, um, I actually don't talk about it enough on my channel but I am... Um, a connoisseur of the Nordic myths, mm. you know, it's it, there's the the Greeks and the Romans. They have a very sophisticated memory of their myths. Mm. The Irish have a pretty good one as well, and um, we probably have, I think, one of the richest Northern European um, ones with like all the characters in it. Mm. But the Norse have like actually a, almost like a full mythos. Mm. Like they have a creation story and they have like philosophy. We don't really have that in Ireland. We've lost our creation story. Mm. The, the 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 Gaels, the Celts, generally, like the French, don't have it either. It's quite interesting, and mm. um, so. One thing I've always loved about Norse myth is um, studying this. And there's a guy called Norse Myth for Smart People. Shout out to him. <laughs> I remember reading his books on this and, and studying this stuff. And he really, really helped contextualize it because he was philosophically educated. Mm. And he was discussing um, what, what Wodan represents, mm. what Odin represents, Woden. And um, it, it's precisely, like, it's so fascinating, but it's precisely about this idea of will and destiny. These seem to be the fundamental questions in Norse mythology, which is very interesting, where Woden would under, like Woden is given a destiny where he says that the, the end of time is going to come and Fenir, the giant chaos wolf, mm-hmm. is going to eat you. And Odin's like, I don't want that to happen. <laughs> and that's like, it's like the black pill. You know? yeah. It's like, you are going to get crushed by the big wolf, it's over. Mm. Black pill doomer. And Woden's like putting on his little Gandalf happy and like, you know, 
um, uh, there's probably a way around this. Mm-hmm. And so Woden goes on his magical hero's journey. So Woden realizes that reality is a thing. It's like a computer program. Mm. It's the weird tree, the the tree of fate, the tree of destiny. And so mm. he, like a shaman, says, right, how do I... Under-? So he goes into the tree of destiny and he goes down and he goes to the roots that creates reality. And he discovers the well of destiny and he stares into the well, like almost like a Christ-like sacrifice in a way, but he stares into the well and he's, he's waiting and waiting until like the computer code of the runes mm. manifests. And then this is the knowledge that he has that he can understand reality. And then he can take those and use them to reprogram reality mm. in order for him to try to defeat the destiny at end, end of time. And so mm. this sets up this whole idea that Woden is the magician going around harvesting the super warriors to bring them to Valhalla to fight the people at the end of time. But, and all that's, it's like a nice myth. People will be like, it's really cool. But mm. the, the philosophical sophistication in that is actually profound. Mm. Because you even look at things like quantum physics. Yeah. You know, you learn about this and this is modern science and they're saying like reality is pretty this, it's pretty up for grabs. Mm. Like, there's no firm destiny with anything. There's actually, as you dig into it, you dig into fundamental reality, the literal atoms that make up this reality, mm. and it becomes very um, probabilistic. It becomes, it becomes very much about our will and how we uh, decide what reality is and our imagination mm. and our pers- capacity to, to, to move the world in the direction that we want. And Odin's like an ancient representation of that thing itself that a capacity to 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 decide and assert your will on the world and it just it captures the spirit of the the the, the normans i guess you, you could mm. say so well because that's precisely what they did yeah. they burst out of here and they decide a fundamental reality shift and it, they push their will out, out into the world and like transform europe forever this mm. type of thing so um i'm a, a good appreciator of, of, of all right good good nice nice yeah so my my story as um as uh now i'm religious i would say so growing up in in sweden in uh, 89 and just as basically everyone else is sort of like agnostic or atheist even uh we haven't had a church for a long time the swedish church now is super woke and uh, hasn't really been part of the upbringing so i know it's different in different countries where we still have sort to like um, uh, a belief system still in place we haven't really had that so for me the Norse gods of course my mother read stories for us when when we were younger so I got that with um, and then father read the Iliad and Odyssey also so I got both sides of wow the, really like, yeah so I uh, love uh, Greek myth as well and of course Norse myth uh, but first I thought it was just nice stories nice myths and then at the, when I turned 30 something like that I uh, began to interest myself more in metaphysics and philosophy and religion everything like that and I always thought that the Christians had the the more profound metaphysics. And then I stumbled upon an author, Stephen Flowers. Big shout out to him. He writes a lot about this. And he uh, he sort of in a in I don't remember exactly which book it was, but he said like the, the Christians simplified it. And I sort of stopped at that sentence. I was like, okay, this is not what I thought at all. But then I started delving deeper into the creation myth and especially the runes. And this is where it's super profound, super interesting. So I started meditating on the runes as well. And that if if anyone is interested in the Germanic soul, the Germanic soul complex, you have the runes and then you have aspects such as Hamingya, so karma uh, quite similar so we can trace the origin back to the um the proto-indo-europeans as well so the Aryans. So that's why you have hamingya and you have different uh, similar concepts in vedic india and same in ireland of course and in italy with the um with the latin romans and in greece uh but anyway that is when i started to really really appreciate the uh, the religious aspects of it so i've always had you know on and off uh, a mjolnir hammer of thor first to represent like a biocultural identity this is you know Sweden is the land of Thor, but now it has taken on a, you know, a metaphysical aspect of it as well. And the runes you have, uh, we have so many. You saw in action the Manas rune when we gymmed the other day, and just recap that session. And of course, I always try to use everything to, a, you know, a practical application of everything. All of this psychomagical things. How can I apply it in uh, in business or in training or in socializing, networking? So anyway, we have this sensitive young man, yourself included, and uh, you know this energy, this Menerbund Corius energy. So Corius is the the ancient Proto-Indo-European Aryan menerbund young men going together like a wolf cult going out and conquering and this can explain the extreme success of the protein europeans that they send out these choreos this menerbund of young men uh out to conquer and you know quite brutal quite savage history of course which 
you know, it is history is quite brutal. But yeah, they kill the men, take the women, basically, and that's why you have you know the mix of Europeans as usual, like. Indo-European and then early European farmers. So we have in Ireland, for example, like 50% Aryan blood and same in Sweden and Finland, like 50%. So we're a mix of like three population groups. Um, but anyway, this Manas energy is so potent. And this also, when you look at the political situation, they do everything they can to try to separate male exclusive groups. Because they know there is a very strong potency in there, especially if you have excited young men networking together and it creates a sort of energy that you can't really explain via um, you know pure physics so the session i had there six by six at 160 kilo squats so i've done it before but it was a long time ago now it felt super easy yeah the it just noticeable. flew up it's super easy so i would have you know been able to do you know 180 simple uh, one of the sets um, I posted to X as well, um, I did seven. I didn't even think about it because I was just flying. And this is something that it doesn't have to do with my musculature. I've tried this so many times. I do want to make a, you know, a literal scientific experiment out of it. Just, you know, measuring what, what, it's, what is going on. But six sensitive young men in my vicinity, you know, foc- focusing attention and intention on me then the weight just flies up. So something everyone can try if you have a good group of friends to just everyone gets in the zone and you know the the zone can't be disrupted by um, a low thumos individual either. So it can only be guys who are actually on the same side. Uh, so this can be something to to try some rune magic in the in the gym. Uh, there's definitely some. I was saying, oh God, there's a lot of things I was saying to you about this. So um, one of them was the even the studies they've done and things like placebo, mm. where um, they would like line up at the entrance of the of the gym and they would say, all right, take this uh, take this drink here and take this pill. It's anivar. So anivar is like a oral steroid, and of course it's it's just sugar. It's fake. Mm. But they do this and they tell these guys. And so all these guys going into the gym in this study think that they're they're on gear. They're like, I'm fucking full. Of- mm. Jazz arms are more powerful. <laughs> and they'd lift something like, I think it might have been either 12 or 21% more. Mm. Like an enormous jump. Mm. Like if you did that as an advanced lifter, you'd be like, man, I'm Superman. Like, mm. I, I was like, I was very strong creatine, whatever I was doing there. <laughs> but the thing is, is that they were just on sugar. It was just sugar. So what happened is like they believed. Mm. It's mentality. The power of, of the idea that they can get more out of themselves. Their nervous system sparks because strength is your nervous system sending electrical signals to get you yeah. to crush things. And so, um, I, I, like I'm sure it's similar to this where mm. you get a group of guys around and they're all just staring at you and giving you the energy and giving you the power mm. and you're like you know you're feeling the pressure of being watched mm. and you're like you know you just feel the energy and you're going to crush harder and you're mm. going to fight harder and that's definitely real even to go back to Conor McGregor the thing that makes Conor McGregor heroic you could say it's his skills which obviously his skills are great you say it's his strength whatever but the thing that everybody would say about him when they're around him is that he handles pressure like nothing else Mm. he literally can handle so many people watching him Mm. and he's still calm that Mm. was the thing he could absorb energy like a sponge it was crazy and that was like you saw it with the Aldo fight you know he steps up against Aldo Aldo is literally wilting you can see Aldo it's almost like the eyes form an actual physical weight Mm. that is pressuring on him and we use that word pressure for a reason so Aldo's like you know (sighs) and then Connor's on the other side and he's like no (laughs) mom It's, it's like loose, yeah. it's calm, all the pressure goes into him and then because he's loose, the pressure actually goes through him yeah. and he's, he's able to perform better and it's precisely um, that, that type of thing with yourself, you're calling on the energy and you're channeling it and then you're, mm. you're using it and it's very, very powerful. I, I'm, I'm going to go on a bit of a rant but uh, I'd love to talk about the Fianna as well but if, if you want to say something, go yeah, ahead. Yeah, so, so just quickly, there is a rune, now this, that is literally like a, a pressure, you can view it, shout out Paul Wagner, by the way, he has an excellent rune course, uh, I used it and then I meditated upon each rune in turn but now there's something that's been really helpful to me as well that you visualize pressure and from that pressure you sort of like to transform it into something else that when the pressure comes on you you get the chance to excel and present yourself in the best possible way so this is something I always think about now it was quite some quite a while since I had a hit piece or anything like that but still the the pressure it's good for you and if you lose the pressure you also lose um, a, a vital energy force so again looking at trump he has so much pressure on him and uses that to you know excellent advantage using you know, a constant energy coming into you so the pressure via you know mental psychomagical technique of visualizing okay now it's now this time like boom the universe just coalesces on you and then you like explode outwards 
So you can view yourself as a conduit for, you know, electric energy or something like that. So all of the runes, they have a, a deeper mystery about the universe. And then also, a, in my humble opinion, at least, um, psychomagical practical application that you can use okay now is mana's time or now is urus the primordial beast time now it's thurisas the the fighting rune or now is now this time um all of these things you can apply in in your life but anyway uh, go on with it well, uh, you've got me to say something else so this is going to be uh <laughs> this is going to be amateur physics time people my friends i'm going to talk about quantum physics i know this is the most basic bitch stuff you've ever fucking heard in your life but <laughs> um exactly what you're talking about this idea of gathering intention it like and, and people will be like oh yeah whatever but th- again, you go into quantum physics, you go into the most advanced, sophisticated physics we have, where we're diving in and asking ourselves the question, like, what is this? Mm. Like, we have this glass. Why does this glass feel hard? Why is there force there? And you would say, well, I don't know. We'll get a microscope and we'll look into it. You look into the glass. You look into the, the glass and you discover the atoms. Mm. You look into the atoms and you discover that the atoms don't exist. There's mm. there's like, they're 99% en- empty space. Mm. There's, no hard, there's no hard thing there. Yeah. This is all real science. And they look into this and they say, well, wait a second. So why, when I punch this, do I feel resistance and, and, mm. and all this? Because inside of an atom, you have the nucleus and the, the electron, which makes the atom, that flows floats around it is not a thing it's like a, a force field mm. actually it's very similar to electricity when you know if, if a cable hits the floor there's this big glow there's this force field of electricity and if you go close to that the ele- electricity um, potentiates so it's called potential there's this big force field of potential electric shock you put your hand into that mm. and the electricity will manifest and strike you and kill you, you know? mm. same with lightning why does lightning happen because there's this large field that builds up and then there might be like you walk out and you're like what's going on up there and Zoom, it comes yeah. down into your hand. It, it, the potential force field. So atoms are literally like these balls of potential force field energy, mm. which is crazy. And then when you you touch against this, it's almost like you're 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 having a, a very light lightning strike. That's mm. what's happening. It's like lightning crashing against us. So the whole world is just force. Yeah. The whole world is made up of like electricity, power, force, and we think that we're contacting mass and weight, but really it's like energy and force that's really getting exchanged. Mm. Go even deeper then into quantum physics. They dig into these atoms, they look at all this, and they start to realize bizarre things like, um, this is the famous double split experiment. They send in loads of particles through two things and the particles present themselves as a wave, but then they get a camera and they look at it and then all of a sudden the particles um, don't... So, okay, a force field is like a musical wave. It's like, mm. you know, so it spreads itself out in a like a wave. But when you observe the 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 wave pattern of the force field of atoms, it actualizes into a, a specific place. So there's something about our consciousness yeah. that makes reality real. Mm. So reality is almost like this potential thing. Mm. It's it's this like force field of all the possibilities that could happen. I mm. apologies for not explaining <laughs> this cleanly. But then when you look at it, it becomes real. So there's something about our minds, our capacity to observe that is incredibly important. Mm. Incredibly important about what happens. So you talk about like taking a rune, and this is the reason why I was getting into this. Mm. Talking about taking a rune and in adding intention to it, or getting the boys around you and adding intention towards you. Mm. It, it's like people will be like, Oh, that's that's weird. Yeah. That's not real. But it's like that's that's literally the most real physics we have. Mm. It's mind blowing how real that is. Yeah. The, your consciousness is fundamental for creating reality, mm. and reality is an exchange of energy. These things are definitely real. They're huge, and this is why I say Norse myth. The more I've got into it, I should probably make a video on this. The metaphysics, the physics of, mm. of Norse myth. It, it, it's all about Woden. Wor- well, all right, from how I understand it, it's all about Woden working with destiny. The word truth the word tree, the the adjustment of all these type of things. It's all to do with this. Mm. And it's 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 profoundly similar to what we see in our reality. It's profoundly similar to what we see at the very, very basics of of of, of the world that makes up the world. Yeah. So we have uh, another rune, very interesting, Perthro. You can view it as, when I visualize it, I view it like you, you hold it like this, so it sort of looks like a, a dice cup. And then you have the Vird, so it's like a tapestry behind you. And of course many things, the, the, uh, the p- tapestry, it's already to a large extent already done because you know you have your ancestors and they are you know a a strand in the in the tapestry but there's always things you can actually do to change it so something i always think about is what can i do today to make to make it so that i alter the weave of fate just a little bit so that in 
in a year a young Napoleon in whichever country it might be. It might be a handsome guy in Ireland or in Sweden or wherever. And he something happens with him that makes him, you know, embark upon um, a journey. So you can take the Rido rune for that. You get the right action, the right journey for you, embarking upon the hero's journey. So everything we do, some guys, they have, you know, if, if you have a larger reach, you will reach out to more people. And the, um, the, the chances of you, you know, doing something positive with the word, uh, the tapestry is, is higher. But even someone like, this is something I usually explain, like, if you go into the gym and you say nice gains to a 17 year old guy, it might, you know, cause a reaction in his word tree that he feels good. Yeah, um, yeah, nice gains. He feels good. He embraces, you know, a heroic path because he feels good with himself. So it could be like a split decision. Had it been someone not saying anything to him, he might have been like, oh, you know, this isn't for me. So I'm just using a very, you know, tangible example here, but it could be all of these small, small changes in the word can have huge differences when it actually comes to the to the greater things so elon musk by his twitter saves the world so one of these things it, it changes the word and creates a whole different reality so this is something for anyone who's you know creating content of some sort whenever you do something you have the opportunity to change the the reality of the universe and especially change the reality of how someone perceives himself so that's always the the imagination starts everything so when i talk about magic you know it's a bit of a strange term because some people they don't really understand what i mean but essentially what i mean is to change your subjective universe so your your thoughts emotions the uh, imagination basically so the realm of the gods and then you change how you are in in um in the physical so to use an example i have um a thought i will I am proud of myself, so therefore I stand straight, I walk straight. This causes a hormonal change in your body. So if you go around like this, your body will interpret it as you being a cock, basically. But if you go like this, your body will interpret it as being um, you know, a specimen, a force of nature. So it will respond to you. So it all starts in the mind. So simple, simple like thought experiment you could do with yourself. Tell yourself that you're great. Stand tall, walk straight, and then your hormones in the body will respond to it. So it's like your your will, imagination starts a chain reaction. So it has its limits, of course, but it's a good way to start. So uh, yeah, I, I look, man, I think that's <coughs> extremely real. Again, that that nineteen year old guy that I met um, is a perfect example of this. Like I think he met you four years ago, and uh, he's like, you know, he's. Uh, I don't know, maybe it's just a, a video he sees of yours. Mm. And then he meets you in the gym or something and you say, oh, good job. This is like just the most basic stuff mm. ever. But to him, it's everything. Mm. You know, it's a huge deal. He's like, man, I can... Because you go in and uh, maybe you go to somewhere else and a guy puts him down. Because mm. I remember that growing up, like you'd have people who are literally negative. Mm. They'd say, oh, you can't do this. Because mm. I remember seeing the picture of the dude. He was skinny. He was a skinny whip. Mm-hmm. He had nothing. He had to pick a, pick a muscle on him. Like he was tiny. Mm. And it's very easy to say, well, like you're clearly not going to be strong. Mm. You're a skinny fucker. Like it's not <laughs> going to happen. And instead, it's, it's that nudge in the opposite direction and it like transforms him fundamentally. Mm. It's huge. Yeah. It's, it's, it's like, it is very, very real. That little nudge, that little domino effect that, that happens. Mm. Again, I'm banging on about physics but um, we look at the quantum questions we look even at like Einstein's mathematics and everything and it implicates all sorts of bizarre things about our reality where I'm talking about this idea that you know you're shooting these particles through the double split experiment and they formulate a probabilistic they form a wave Mm. of all the probable or potential places again potential is a very important word that the particle could end up this is what's happening here and then when you observe it it actualizes in one now this implies that there's a potential range of different realities that could happen Mm. and when you observe it one of those actualizes so that means that you know is there parallel reality is there parallel universes Mm. Einstein's Mm. metaphysics is the same question you look at things like black holes and they, they do the mathematics and it implies that all right so if there's a black hole, if you go into the black hole, does that mean that you come out on another time? And because re- black holes are all about mm. time, do you come out in another timeline? There's a reason why all these these things get thrown around because the physics implies this type of stuff. And so this is precisely what you're saying. This is like the this is the ultimate question. Mm. In that we're sitting here right now, we're getting all this like pressure to be black pilled and all this. <laughs> is that and we say that's reality? You know, the very wise, cynical guy who knows everything. He's like, oh, that's reality. We, we must be black pilled. Everything's over. Mm. It's it's done. We're, we're, we're screwed. And it's like, 
what happens if we do live in a situation where it's only just potentials? Mm. Anything in some, or a large range of things could happen. And we go down one path and there's probably parallel universes where it all works out. Mm. And the only thing stopping us is our capacity to observe and put our intention into it mm. and decide and have the imagination to go into different ones. Mm. What if that's the case? Because if that's, and that's like very, it's runic. It's, that's what Woden does. I think that's what Woden was doing when he goes into the word tree. He's saying like, my destiny is to be blackpilled and eaten by the wolf. <laughs> is there a parallel way? Is there a way I can get out of this? Mm. Is there a way that we can we can we can jostle this a little bit? And I think that that is a very fundamental question, a very very big deal. And these little things where you're just pushing a kid to say, you know, you could definitely get stronger if you keep working. Mm. Little things like that just have huge effects. Keep putting your will out. All the guys you see successful have the imagination to keep taking it shots. That's basically mm. what it is. Yeah. And then over time that just compounds and mm. changes so much stuff. And then you'll see it where there'll be like people, uh, we'll even say online, there's creators that drive like the majority of the conversation and there's mm. a lot of people then that are like commentating. Mm. But the one that is creating is the one doing all the, the, the jostling of the narrative and the destiny. Yeah. And it's it's just so important to be in that that sense. So I, I, I'm very mm. real as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. And uh, so this is, I usually view it as a, um, a big battle of souls like we have the um the regime or whatever you want to call them like the, the guys who don't want the best for mother europe and then we have on the other side the guys like us so i i constantly see it as a battle of like um you know souls trying to pull in different directions and w- who do they believe in will win so a young guy listens to me and uh, i say you know don't watch porn go to the gym uh, and and you will be happy. And then the other side says, you know, have a lot of promiscuous sex, take drugs, and you will be happy. So it's always like this this pulling thing. And whomever you listen to, uh, that becomes reality. So to use another like very basic example, if you have a guy whose his entire life has been told that he's good at stuff, such as myself, I've always heard this, like, oh, you're so good at everything. Um, then, of course, later on, when I started on the internet, I had detractors as well. But usually it's been that way. And you start believing it. And then... You know, you you don't even question it because everyone else says this to you. Now you get to a stage also, and this is where you truly get to use your imagination, where you can tell yourself things. So you can tell yourself things such as, I am the the greatest, whatever it might be, I will achieve regime change. So this is something I tell myself, of course. Now I can have others telling me this as well. I would believe them, but I also believe myself. So you get to sort of a stage where you're confident enough in your own imagination that you can actually alter a reality. Now, of course, how will it look? I don't know. We're here in the Vird right now. We're trying to alter the course of history by this conversation. Now, of course, we have bigger players as well, such as uh, Musk and Trump and everything like that. And, you know, the Vird is to a large extent already done, but we can still do our utmost to to sort of change it. And when you start to look at it, uh, and especially when it comes to this, you know, the negative side as well, with all of this white white guys, uh, all their lives they've been told, you know how the school system, it, it wasn't as bad when I went to school, but I know how, how bad it is now because I hear younger guys talking about it, that you know, constant bombardment saying that you have to be guilty and ashamed and you're so bad and everything like that. And of course, they pull them in this direction and you will feel quite bad with yourself if that's all you hear. But um, you can also listen to a positive voice saying that you have the divine blood in you, the, the blood of heroes that you can pull you in this direction. So when and when you realize how real it is, how much of a difference it makes, then uh, it's, you know, for me, it's a source of constant motivation that I know that I have to keep pulling in this direction because I'll, otherwise it will be swallowed down the the path of uh, depression, basically. So, yeah. I think even, uh, you know, a question that a lot of people don't like is the question of morality because... Um, you could even look at it this way is that if you're dealing with all these potential realities and if you people say like you know there's no such thing as morality people read Nietzsche and be like morality's not real I can do whatever I want and so it's like uh, I'll be a decadent you know I'll Mm. I'll make decadent choices whatever that might mean (laughs) Mm. and this is a very fascinating thing because if you take this idea that we're living in this potentialized world where things go any direction at any point Mm. and you think that your decisions don't mean anything but Mm. if you actually believe if you literally just believe the physics you believe mm. the f- physics of reality that we studied and you just add in 
moral questions to it, such as like, all right, what, what, if I make a choice, it's affecting the particles and deciding a destiny. So if you say to yourself, right, I'm going to do something that is uh, decadent, we'll say, you're actually nudging your reality in that way. And you might mm. think, you know, people will be like, you shouldn't watch porn or something like that. And you're like, I don't want people telling me what to do. It's like, all right, fine, fine. Mm. But if you do watch it, it's like you're opening up a window into that real that energy and mm. maybe maybe you feel okay with it but you don't know where that goes mm. because it's like one decision branches into all decisions yeah and this is this is really scary about the physics of this stuff is that like the all of the future is potential it can mm. be anything but as you go forward in time you make decisions that narrow the future mm. so when you're born it's just like you know the, the, the potential is enormous yeah but as you go forward you make choices and as you hit 20 30 40 50 until you're like 80 mm. and then you know 90 and then it's done you're dead mm. and so the things narrow so every decision you make is like deciding something it's mm. it's it's narrowing your destiny into a path and so if you keep on making these you know we'll say decadent choices mm. you're you're wodan who's saying oh whatever the Fenrir is not going to get me something yeah. like this you start to put yourself in that path and you don't like you just have to ask yourself where does this go you watch something like porn you might think it's harmless mm. but it does do so like it imprints images in your head yeah of you being like you know cuckolded and stuff like this and <laughs> yeah. that that has effects that has cascading effects and then you make a positive choice mm. like you could call it a moral choice this is what people would traditionally call moral you cause things that are harmonious that are aligned with nature mm. that um, bring positive energy that feel positive you know being in love being um having strong relationships having glorious sex like these mm. things all feel good and they reinforce positivity you notice not an awful lot of the amoral things don't actually feel that good mm. they're, they're like decadent because they're negative yeah and so it's like a destiny spiral whichever direction that you go so mm. i think there's a, a lot to that yeah so so going back to what i was saying about the manas energy that you want high through most guys so it's like your your own vibration level so you want guys who vibrate on a high level so So if you do live a decadent lifestyle, your divine energy, we can say, so like your connection to the imagination, the gods, everything like that, it gets lowered the the more low vibration activities you partake in, such as pornography, drugs, everything like that. So you basically sink down into this, you know, only the flesh. So of course in, in the Norse, like the Germanic soul complex, we have many different things. So you have, uh, you know, your physical body, which is very important. Don't get me wrong. It is important. Um, but you also have the, the connection to the divine and everything like that. And if we're talking about like NPCs, normies or zombies or whatever, uh, they are mainly in their body. They don't really have this higher capacity. And if you conduct yourself in such a way that, yeah, watching a lot of porn, you will sort of drop in um, consciousness, so to speak. So when you want to create this optimal sense of manas, chorus, menerbun energy, everyone has to be high level of vibration. Because then you will also, you know, when we're sitting here, we both have a strong, uh, you definitely have, I will be, I will put my humility aside and I hope, hopefully I am a high vibration in the yeah, you're, you're uh, high <laughs> Okay, good, good. So that means our manas energy sort of like connect and then boom, get something bigger. And then when you have like many different guys in the same team with the same vision, same imagination and the, the collected manas energy that that creates something truly powerful and i do believe that our enemies they um, like the regime they know this which is also why they are quite keen on you know breaking up male only spaces such as the military because they know it's such a powerful force that can be created so one guy can be strong but it's absolutely nothing compared to two guys three guys four guys with the same you know operating at the same level of vibration or energy so it becomes something truly truly powerful and i'm just at the very start of my uh, um journey to understand all of this but i will conduct more gym magic psycho uh, schizo experiments in the gym but, to, to figure out but that's that's absolutely true like even um you can even think about it obviously logically but even just like normal social stuff, if you have a group of people and one guy comes in with a problem, mm. usually that's going to become everybody's problem. Yeah. 
Like if you come in and you're hanging out with a lot of people and you were like, let's go to the pub, you know, because mm. you're going to have a drink. You know, we say drugs are bad, but like maybe you drink or two, you're fine if you can control yourself. If one guy's an alcoholic, mm. that social event is just going to be a disaster. Yeah. You have to be very careful. Mm. So someone who doesn't have control of themselves is like a liability. They yeah. bring negative energy. That expands to everything. Mm. And you go out and like, maybe maybe you're a lot of young guys and you want to meet girls. And one guy's like a crippling porn addiction and he's weird around girls because mm. of this. That actually destroys it because then like you go, you meet some beautiful girls, you're like talking and then he's just like, off and you're like that's not good <laughs> yeah. and and you see this and again it's that same thing where these decisions um, cascade because then if you're the guy deciding to you know do the decadence watch the porn mm. you start to go down and all the guys that you could associate with that would pull you out of this mm actually the, they close themselves off to you mm. because you've got that negative vibration to yourself. Mm. So you ne literally need to like defeat your reality, start to go in an upward potential and then you'll it'll be way easier for you to fit in with this mm. type of stuff and get, get brought up in this way. Uh, you also brought the idea of the, the Manabund, uh, the Fianna, like to mm. bring up the Fianna. The Fianna are, I think, one of the best illustrations. Like we don't have a creation myth in Irish myth. It's, it's quite sad. But I think um, the illustrations of things like the Fianna, I think are one of the best examples of maybe what the Koiros might have been like. Mm. Because with the Fianna, um, these are all the Gaelic uh, sons of, of the kings and stuff like this in their in their their areas, and they basically get kicked out at about fourteen, something mm. like this, thirteen, fourteen. They're like, go into the wilderness, and you go into the wilderness. And you wander around. So you're like the, the young man lost mm. and potentiality has opened up to you. And what will happen is as you're going through the Irish forest, it's probably raining as it usually is. <laughs> um, and it's the lovely lush green Irish forest. There's deer around. You will uh, be walking one day and maybe you throw a spear, try to catch a deer, you miss and all this. And then some guy will like say, oh, bad, bad shot or something like that. And you're like, who is this? Mm. And then maybe another guy shows up and another guy shows up and you're like, fuck, I've, I've come across the Fianna. Mm. This is the wandering tribe of youths. Mm. And they, you might say to them, I want to join. And they'll like, well, all right, well, you can try join, mm. but we have an initiation process. It's like the SWAT teams or mm. the military. And so the Fianna would get them to do physical challenges first. So mm. we get them to like throw rocks, strike spears. They, ha he has, they have to chase after. So one of them hunts them and the guy has to run through the forest without breaking any sticks. So mm. he has to be light footed, you know? Ah, right. And then mm. when that is done, when you achieve all that, what happens next is they sit you down and they test your psychomagical powers. Mm. They see how good you are at uh, reciting poetry. Mm. They see how good you are at going into the other world. So their, mm. their idea is that you go to Tirna Nog and stuff and come back and do all this. So the whole idea within the Fianna is mental test. They're testing for your spiritual strength, your intellectual strength, your physical strength. And then once you prove all that stuff, they welcome you into the Manor Bund. Mm. You become like one of them and you wander and you, you know, do the most important things. These guys used to, they're kind of like mercenaries where they would fight. They would go to other countries and stuff like this. And um, it's, it's precisely what you're speaking about. It's like, a, it's very protective. It's mm. very like, all right, there's, <laughs> there's standards. Yeah. But but the thing is, is that, and like nowadays people would say, well, that's evil, you know, like standards mm. is horrible. You're, you're, you're excluding people who, who can't run with light feet. But it's mm. like the, the one thing that the male spirit wants is to be held to standards. Mm. The idea of like a man, you go to a guy and say, if you lift yourself up to this level, mm. you will be treated with high status. You'll be called a Fianna, which is like basically being called a, a you know, UFC champion. Mm. And, and it's it's possible for you to achieve that. Mm. You can achieve that, but you have to make yourself better. You have to crush the bad potentials and funnel them into the good potentials. And like most guys I find are just looking for that. Mm. And it's it's so funny that that's the thing that's pathologized. Mm. The, the group is pathologized as like an evil cavern of monsters. Mm. The male instinct for this is, is pathologized. And um, wanting to have standards is pathologized as well. And it's, like, it's almost like the answer for young guys. Mm. So yeah, definitely. All right, we're taking subs now at the moment. I'm, uh, I'm currently, I have a kombucha sitting beside me. I should be, we should have some prod product placement because <laughs> I have some Jotunheim uh, glycine. I'm having quite a lot of that. And uh, so this is, this is me shilling for Marcus here. <laughs> I, I do consume, I am a, a real consumer. This is not a, an affiliated paid advertisement of uh, Jotunheim uh, glycine and also the mastic gum. Yeah. I find that very good. I uh, get in, I'm working on my jaw maxing, so. And it's, you know what I noticed about the mastic gum is that it cleans the teeth very well. Ah, it does, it does. That's something I didn't expect. It's mm. almost like, yeah, it's like a toothbrush event. And then you come out of it and you feel very good. And it feels nice, like just <laughs> getting all the, the crap and all this stuff. So yeah, like I see pretty much this whole spirit of forming the Manor Bund, forming the Fianna, getting, uh, getting all that stuff aligned. I think it's important. I think the general themes we've been talking about today are things that I just don't see people talk about at mm. all in, I guess you could say, our, our circles and whatnot. And it's bad. I think the um, 
self-improvement sphere, which people think is basic bitch, but it's not. I think it actually can be connected to quite lofty ideas and it, it makes mm. everything very, very tangible. And there's a lot of ways that this stuff is more important than people might think because it's very easy to for example, go on the internet and have your opinions and have your complaints, there's no challenge to your personality that way. Mm. There's no pressure on you to, to make yourself a force. Mm. And we're not really, like, the situation we are in is that generally every, like, everyone in the West has been encouraged to be sloppy and slobbish. Mm. And I think a huge part of that is switching that energy. Mm. I think the reason why Jordan Peterson did so well all those years ago is because he was literally just enforcing that. Mm. In the most basic terms, he was saying, don't be a slob, you know, <laughs> clean your room, yeah. lift your standards up. So I think your uh, presence has done a huge amount to push this. This mm. is why I think it's so egregious that you got so much pressure because you are literally just saying, uh, become better, become, you know, grow your, grow your strength, become more powerful, uh, lift your standards so you're, you're a contributor towards the Fianna, the Manorbund, mm. the Manas, whatever it is. Um, so I, I guess all compliments to you for that and uh, oh, thank for you. making thank it you. through. I, I don't know, do you have any last thoughts? We'll probably wrap up now. Uh, yeah, so yes, speaking of that, the, the post physique, uh, I didn't come up with it. I just took, took it and ran with it because I thought it was really useful to, to get around that, you know, have some proof of work first. And this is also, now of course this is a completely different topic we might talk about I can interview you you some time about the the different brain sides oh, uh, yes. where you have like the the more holistic based view and then you have the more schizophrenic detailed view so uh, a schizo a bad schizophrenic so not schizo in the based and fun way but a bad schizophrenic will look at something like a bench press and say oh why do you need to lift a big thing on your chest but the holistic based view is of course to see aha this is someone who can sub subject himself to discipline over a long period of time and this has a whole host of different good uh, things. So I always want to, you know, if I want to network, I want to have that base component in place already because I know that if someone is jacked or on the path at least, he has a good productive, constructive mindset and he also has good discipline. And uh, if someone doesn't, it usually, if a guy isn't jacked, sometimes it comes with a whole host of different bad things. Now I'm not saying all the time, but especially in the younger generation so the guys are 20 now for example they should be in the gym they should pursue the path of physical excellence if they don't then uh, th there might be some warning signs to look out for maybe porn addiction or something like that well it's, it's it's very true because um so many things again it's about that idea of potential realities so and we will wrap up don't worry but um, <laughs> There's so many things that have to go right. Like if you go into, like, all right, so I, if you want to become strong, you want to develop a good physique, you, like the, the sheer quantity of things you have to get correct mm. are enormous. Yeah. Like you have to, you know, you can't be an alcoholic. You can't be, um, you can't be like sloppy with your eating. Mm. You can't be uh, indulgent and lazy. You have to even do things like you have to comprehend simple systems like progressive overload. You have to say to yourself, all right, well, if I want to get stronger, I have to stay at something and get 1% marginally mm. better. Yeah. Like I remember when I came to my YouTube channel, that was the thing that allowed me to become successful is that I said, all right, my first videos are going to be crap. Mm. But if I just say the next video is going to be 1% better than the last mm. one and the next idea and my, my next speech will be 1% better than the last one. I just focused on that progressive overload mm. and that literally compounded like so quick. It was mm. crazy. I couldn't believe it when I was like, mm. I was like, this is this, this works everywhere. It's a reality hack, yeah. I think. And this is exactly what you're pointing out is that like, all right, should we hold people to standards, individual personal standards of being in shape, these type of things? Obviously, you can't write off everybody. There's definitely exceptions all mm. the time. But generally speaking, that type of pressure on people to say, well, look, hitting the gym, getting yourself in a good uh, physical shape, uh, uh, you know, learning how to fight. Something like fighting is mm. another brilliant one. Like, fighting teaches you fear mm. and that's it's just impossible to get real fear in the modern world mm. like fighting is you're standing up there and someone's going to hurt you yeah. and you feel the adrenaline mm. and that's very unique it's very scary it's very intense but it's addicting and it also there's the quote from Fight Club where they say after fighting the rest of reality just says the the, the, the world turned because nothing's mm. real you go out there and people are like bickering at you stuff it's like <laughs> this is not real you know this isn't there's no danger here mm. it's, it's so much different so all these all these 
paths towards physical excellence, they require virtues for you to be in even moderately successful at mm. them. They require an enormous range of virtues yeah. and the consistency in upholding them. Mm. So I think they're they're um, they're great rubrics, and it's something obviously you always promote, which is fantastic. Yeah, definitely. And uh, and to just add to that, the the best teaching I've gotten in life, probably from the gym, is just this progression. So one percent better, and I apply it in everything. So you know, in fatherhood, I try to be a bit better every time if I notice something on myself. So I notice when um, when my uh, firstborn, uh, I wasn't as patient as I am now. So it's just something to train at. And, you know, to be a bit humble as well, to know that you aren't perfect. Same thing with the, with the supplements. Always try to perfect any recipe. Same thing with, with the clothing. Try to get excellent. So look at this. Boom. Giga Chad uh, Marine Wool. So it's just like constant pursuit of excellence and always look yourself critically in the mirror. And this is, you know, I usually joke about talking about how humble I am because in my earlier days it was usually me, you know, posing in front of the camera for like 10 minutes before actually starting to talk. So it's been a bit of a joke, but I am humble in the sense that I have no issue at all looking myself critically in the mirror and saying, okay, how can I sharpen this, especially when it comes to communication. And this is where I draw inspiration from you that you're very effective at communicating ideas that you, you know, blow, blows people's minds. So, um, yeah, good stuff, good stuff. Even an illustration of what you're saying there, like uh, you're capable of being, because you would obviously like, you know, mug people, <laughs> you, you act arrogant and everything, but um, you're doing that tongue in cheek because you do mm. criticize yourself. Mm. It's very interesting because because you're hard on yourself, you actually unlock the ability to mm. act more confident because you know, like it's kind of, you're joking a little bit mm. and people get offended by that or like it's it's ludicrous, you know, mm. like this guy's clearly just having a bit of fun. Mm. He's, he's worked really hard to look great. So he's like showing that off and then you'll notice people that aren't hard on themselves are phenomenal at being critical of other people yeah they're definitely. phenomenal they're like they can literally deconstruct everything they want about you but then you you shine the light of, of observation it's like this it's the same with yeah. you know <laughs> the, the quantum physics Woden you sh- mm. shine observation and you and you look at their actuality mm. and you realize that they they think they have all this potential but they've never manifested it yeah. they've never gone down and decided what's the destiny what's the universe what's the actualization I'm going to do mm. what What's the way I'm going to make things happen? And for this reason, there's a, there's a you can't really trust them. That's mm. a really big critique of people, you know. So speaking of that, the the charisma part is being likable. I remember still, uh, it wasn't really a hit piece because it was quite nice. I got happy reading it. So it was like one thing that makes him able to present nationalist views in you know an inoffensive manner is that he's extremely likable and charismatic so it's like, yes. uh, so it's it's also like the because they present always and this is something we've done forever they try to present anyone with nationalist views as you know this um, low low vibration low yes. energy loser basically so when they see someone who's like really positive and uplifting and charismatic and fun it's like they don't really know how to handle it because it doesn't really fit in so my metapolitical work has been one to present like statistics like okay this is going in the wrong direction but even more so to present a different vision of what a normal nationalist guy is so yeah you can be happy and healthy and have these views because I've worked so hard at presenting this alternative vision. And then, you know, a young guy says, aha, I need to act like this, uh, like, um, you know, a, a loser to have these views. But then they say, aha, okay, it's you can really actually... true. Hmm. Like, sorry to interrupt, but no. like, that's such a big deal because the, the image... This is like it's like demoral. It's again the potential, the potential, the potentiality thing. Like the image of of someone you could say is a reactionary mm. is is obviously like framed very negative, and people throw around stuff like incel and stuff mm. like this, and that's a very negative image of a man. And again, this is what I'm sort of saying about yourself. Like you're the ideals that you promote are positive. You, mm. you crack jokes. You're lighthearted. You're encouraging people to read. You're saying get involved in literature. Learn how to speak properly. Learn how to be polite. Learn how to love a woman. Learn how to get strong. Learn how to fight. Learn not to love your country and it's like you know that's they're trying to make that a low vibrational vibrational thing it's actually very bizarre mm. because it's 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 like um that that is absolute demoralization of a positive role model mm. which is a very very bizarre thing to, for people to just let people get away with to mm. let, let like mainstream culture get away with it's like you can't do that you're not allowed to do that and I, this is something I'm, I'm always talking about people like say oh yeah you're banging on about Nietzsche and um, one of Nietzsche's I think most simple and effective things that he always speaks about is um, um, his analysis of the way of belief systems and he would see that certain belief systems have what he calls a life denying quality 
Mm. Now, I, I like to make this more blunt and say like death cult quality. Yeah. You see in like uh, Gnosticism, for example, it shows up all the time in history and they would do like bizarre things like cut their own testicles off and stuff mm. like this. And um, Heaven's Gate, it's a UFO cult that mm. showed up in like the 1990s and 2000s and they all started to cut their testicles off because life was <laughs> life was evil. You know, yeah. life, was, life was damaged, life was broken. And it's very bizarre seeing that psychology because it's, it's like hate for life. Mm. Life denying. Life is evil. Life is wrong. It's full of pain. It's full of suffering. And what that leads to is everything that is natural and about life, you have to castigate as immoral. Mm. And so anybody who represents that is evil and immoral. And so you are like the opposite. You're a life affirmer. You're someone who's saying, okay, I'm from this land. I I am someone who feels instincts. I am someone who trusts those instincts and those instincts are magical. They bring me happiness and mm. joy. They allow me to create families, to create businesses, to create this. I want to indulge in my pride because it forces me to become better, to live up to it. Mm. And they want to literally castigate all that as evil, but you instead brace, embrace it. And it's actually this very like lofty, positive energy. Mm. Whereas they're trying to grab it and pull it down and be like, no, you have to hate yourself. You have mm. to hate your instincts for your territory. Like the most basic one of all, male territorialism. Yeah. You to see that as, as, as negative and as broken as evil. You have to deny nature, deny mm. your nature, deny your feelings, your gender role, you know, deny your male gender role, deny your female gender role, become a botched version of those mm. two things. And everything is like this downgoing breakdown, a uh, break, break, breakdown situation. And it's literally like we talk about psychological warfare. It's like a fight mm. between getting pulled by this horrible death cult gravity and people trying to lift up and pull away from that. And mm. I think that's, that's actually what the culture war has been about. Yeah. It's been literally like overcoming that and, and trying to just take a hard no and say, whoa, guys, we're not going that direction mm. because that does not lead anywhere good. Yeah. And um, that was really the fight. So mm. uh, if you have any last thoughts on that and then maybe we can uh, call it a wrap then. Yeah, no, it's perfectly stated by you. So we can actually leave it there on a high Thumos life affirming note. Yeah. Okay, fantastic. Well, Mr. Uh, Mr. Fallon, thank you very much for your time, yeah, ladies and gentlemen. You. This gentleman is a YouTube channel. I recommend you check it out. And um, he, you are also on X at the moment. You have a podcast. Yes, yes. So X, YouTube. Check out YouTube. He's a podcast as well. And um, he has Yotnam Nutrition, which mm. you can get. I, as I said, I buy products off this gentleman as well. So, and this is not not affiliated. I'm not getting. <laughs> there's not a brown envelope <laughs> the table here or anything like this. Um, I actually do use. I use the glycine and I use the mastic gum because I, I just enjoy them. I find they're good quality. The glycine is very good for sleep. Mastic gum cleans your teeth, gets your jaw maxed, and all this stuff. So, um, also the woolen clothes. You can see the he he was well aware that he was going to be speaking to a Celt today, so he wore the green. <laughs> this is a uh, this is a uh, this is good and. He has uh, lots of really well-made stuff as well. He actually sources some of it from Ireland, gets some very good uh, thick woolen clothes. So if you're uh, someone who wants some Cozy Max clothes, I highly recommend this. And um, yeah, man, that's pretty much... Uh, yeah, awesome. Cheers. Yeah. Uh, any, anything you'd like to say yourself for the brand or shall we call it uh, that? No, it's, it's all good. I think you presented it in a, in a great way. Awesome. Thank you very much. All right, ladies and gentlemen, see you later. Bye-bye. Thank you. Stay juicy.